In fact, I'll probably help you get in trouble with your mom. Mm -hmm. No, you're not going to turn me in. Oh, you'll turn yourself in. Yes, Yay! Yay! I, I, and I, listen up. I'm going to be watching to make sure who gets the uh, little deflectors. Yeah, be quiet. Don't disobey it. It's terrible. <laughs> Okay, now, Freddie, I can help you get the stain out. You can? Oh, goody, goody, oh, goody. I get the stain out, I get the stain out. No, not the stain that you're talking about. What? Yeah. Now, the stain that you're talking about is going to take some kind of special cleaner that I don't have. What? You said you was going to help me get the stain out. You've got a stain of a different kind. What? Your eyes. It's the stain of sin. What do you mean? I mean, when you disobeyed mom, and then you lied, and then you hid your 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 clothes here. Yeah, that's sin. Oh man, now you make me feel really bad. Oh, I can't help you get the stain out of the. Uh, Easter clothing, but I am going to help you get the stain out of your heart. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to explain. I need you to sit down and listen carefully. I have you sit under here. And watch this, all right? Okay. All right, you guys better listen up, too. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Freddy. All right, take those Bibles and open them up to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. All the way back in time to when the children of Israel were held in bondage to the Egyptians. They were slaves to the Egyptians. And, and God sent a special man to help them get free. Does anybody know the name of the guy he sent? God sent Moses. And Moses now has gone nine times before Pharaoh and said, let my people go. If you don't let my people go, this terrible plague or this terrible thing is going to happen. And each time, all nine times, those things happen. And the tenth time, Moses said, this is my final warning. On the tenth time now, I'm, God is going to send his death angel over all of Egypt. And that death angel is going to kill every firstborn child in every home that does not have the blood applied to their door. Yep, anybody who's firstborn. Listen up. I'm doing the talking. God said, if you expect for that death angel to pass over you and not destroy you and kill your firstborn, you need to take a male of the first year. Look at verse 5 of chapter 12 of Exodus. It says, your lamb shall be what? Without blemish. That means it can't be having a disease or having a spot on it that is that shows it's not a perfect lamb. It has to be perfectly white, perfectly uh, un un uh, perfectly healthy, and it says, and a male of the first year. I wonder how, why it has to be a male. <sighs> because Jesus was a man. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. Had to be just a year old, it says, of the first year, and you shall take it out of the sheep and goats uh, uh, from your goats. Mm -hmm. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So everybody gets a lamb to keep in their house. Now, how many of you have ever had a little farm animal kept in your house? A little goat or a little I have a goat. Or a chicken. Right now. What happens when it gets you hang around it for we several have days? We have to you kind of fall in love with it. You think it's a wonderful little thing. Imagine a lamb being brought into your house. 
And then after a few days, Dad says, now, kiddos, I don't want you to watch. Because I'm going to have to kill this lamb. What? Not kill the lamb. It's a perfectly innocent lamb. Yeah, kill the lamb. Where did you get that? You want the But the dad says, do we want the firstborn in our house to be killed? No. Then someone innocent and perfect has to die in their place. Why, Dad? Why? Because sin. Sin is what causes us to experience death. And the only remedy for sin is the blood of the lamb. So Dad would take the lamb, kill the lamb, shed the blood, and then that wasn't enough. He had to do something else now. Do you know what he had to do? He had to take the blood to the front door of the house. This is the door. And he would take a weed called hyssop and dip the brushy weed into the blood. And like a paintbrush. Paint the blood. And then he had to apply the blood. Well, why? Because that's what God commanded. That night, as the death angel came over Egypt, all the firstborn in every person's house that did not have the blood applied to the door, the death angel would take their life. There were cries and screams all over Egypt. terrible way. The whole nation rose up and said, get Israel out of here. Get them out. And so they had to pack up all their things. And this is what they wanted to do. They got them out of the nation. They pushed them out. They even gave them gold and silver and all kinds of things. That was called the Passover. Every year after that, Israel was commanded to observe, like we observe Christmas, or like we observe Easter. In fact, Easter and Passover are always on the same day every year. Did you know that? No. That's why it changes every year, because that Passover is on the Jewish calendar. And so here's the, here's the amazing thing about the Passover, is that it's the same night Jesus had to die. The night before Jesus died, Jesus gathered all his disciples together in an upper room. And they thought, oh yeah, it's Passover, so we're going to observe the Passover. They eat a special cracker, and they eat a roasted lamb, and, and things like that. But Jesus sat down at the table, with all the 12 disciples and said, men, we're changing this thing. The old covenant was the Passover covenant, the blood of animals. Did you know the blood of animals can't cleanse anyone from sin? It is only a picture of what Jesus was going to do. And so Jesus took bread and he took grape juice and he gave it to all the men around the table. And he says, this is the covenant of my blood, which I shed for you. Wait, wait, wait. Is Jesus a lamb? Is Jesus the lamb of God? Didn't John the Baptist say when John the Baptist saw Jesus? John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus is that Lamb. Well, that night, after Jesus showed them the importance of the uh, change of the new covenant under his blood, Jesus went out to the Garden of Gethsemane began to pray because he knew what was going to happen. What did the other disciples do while he was praying? Sleep. Sleep. They fell asleep. Indeed. 
And then the, the soldiers came out in that garden of Gethsemane and took Jesus away. And then they brought him before a, a, a several judges that day and they condemned Jesus to death. Now they did some things to the Lord Jesus that made him bleed. The soldiers him. took him and they punched him in the face. They took his beard and they ripped the hair out of his beard, ripped the, the beard out of his face. He began to bleed. They plated a crown of thorns like this one. What I mean by plated, they, they created it. Those thorns are very sharp. They put that on Jesus' head. Then they took sticks and beat the, the thorns down on his head. Why? Why? Why did Jesus have to be pierced? Why did he have to be beaten? Then they took him out and with a cat of nine tails, they, they whipped his back to where his body was bleeding. Why did Jesus have to bleed? Why were they treating him so badly? Because he has to go. No, because it takes blood to cleanse us from our sin. It's the only thing that will cleanse us. So they took the Lord Jesus and they nailed him to a cross. People came and stood around and watched. The soldiers also. And Jesus was bleeding and dying. Why? Why did he have to bleed and die? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. In order for us to be cleansed from sin, blood has to be shed. I would never want to be like that. Now young people, once you look at what all these things have in common, no, you think this cleans windows? This cleans stuff? <laughs> this cleans toilets? Yeah. Oh, this cleans gum out of the carpet when some kid drops their gum in the carpet. It dissolves and cleans it. This cleans dishes. This cleans clothes. <laughs> this cleans your breath. <laughs> this cleans your teeth. We've got all kinds of things that clean us up. But what can wash away my sin? Jesus. Jesus. But the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? The blood of Jesus. How oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Young people. The only way to be able to be cleansed from your sin. Freddie, are you listening? Freddie. Hey, are you listening? Oh yeah, I'm listening. Freddie doesn't need any of this stuff to clean the stain out of his Easter jacket. What Freddie needs is to apply the blood of Jesus to his heart. And you do that by faith. You tell the Lord in prayer that you know he bled and died for you, but that you know that you've sinned and you've got a serious problem because you're going to have to answer to God someday for the times you've disobeyed, lied, stole, cheated. Those are wrong things. And if you get what you deserve for your sin, you have to go to hell. God doesn't want you to go to hell. And so God prepared a way. He prepared an innocent, perfect lamb that would bleed and die for you. And that perfect lamb was the Lord Jesus Christ. And he didn't die because he was strangled or he suffocated. He died because the blood came out of his body. He bled and he bled and he bled. That's the only thing that will cleanse your heart from sin. So now... Young people, I just need you to think about this. 
Have you ever applied the blood of Jesus to your life? Have you ever asked Jesus Christ to come in your life to save you from your sin? Have you ever said, Lord Jesus, I need you to cleanse me from my sin? If you haven't, you need to. That's what Freddie needs to do. Now, he may not ever get that chocolate out of his Easter vest. But he can get the sin off of his heart if he can take it to the Lord and confess it. Then he needs to go to his mom and confess to her he got into the cave and ate it. And, uh, and she'll crown him for several weeks. But that's okay because uh, now he's clean. Amen? All right. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.